In March, millionaire Ukrainian businessman Andrei Stavnitsa watched on CCTV as Russian soldiers took over his house to the west of Kiev. Well, rather than do what a lot of people have had to do and just sit helplessly, Andre contacted the Ukrainian army and gave the go-ahead for his home to be bombed. So this footage shows the aftermath of that bombing, huge parts of the house destroyed with Russian military equipment scattered outside. Andre joins us now. He's in Lublin in Poland, where he's been helping coordinate aid efforts, uh, which is what he's dedicated a lot of his time to right now. Andre, thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning, Britain. I mean, how do you feel that your house it looks, you know, we've, we've seen the original pictures of the house, looks absolutely fabulous, but, you know, how do you feel that you've had to destroy it uh, for, for this cause? Well, good morning. Good morning, Britain. Um... Well, it was kind of an obvious decision for me. Um, there is not much you can do nowadays to help military. And that was one of the opportunities that I had. Yeah. So you you had to flee the house, presumably, but there were still some security in it. Um, just explain how you come to see, because a lot of people who've had to flee their homes uh, have had to just sit and fear what's happening in their homes, but you had the opportunity to see what the Russians were doing there. Yeah, so there was a, a security person inside the house. On the 5th of March, the Russian uh, army pulled into the village and they basically took hostage <clears throat> of, uh, of my security uh, people. They were um, undressed, interrogated. Uh, their, their phones were checked. Uh, the, the, the soldiers, if you can call them this, uh, they were looking for Nazi messaging or whatever, which obviously they couldn't find. And then they, um, as I said, they undressed my security people and they let them go into the woods. So for two days, um, uh, these guys had to walk home. Unfortunately, their phones were destroyed, so they had no connection with us and we, we didn't know if they're dead or alive. And finally, after two days, they reached us from, from a safe place and, and told us what happened. And so at that point, you thought, right, I don't want my home to be used by this invading force. Is that, was that your position? That is correct. I saw from my... Um, they destroyed most of the cameras inside the house. But, however, there was one uh, amateur small uh, webcam that was still working from time to time when uh, electricity was on. And I saw that they were basically looting other homes and bringing stuff from other homes into my house and from there uh, loading trucks with uh, uh, TVs and uh, I don't know, whatever, iPads, computers, personal belongings of other people. <clears throat> there were 12 military vehicles on my territory, including rocket launchers Grad and Tornado, uh, which they used to to shot, uh, to shoot at Kiev because they had, uh, this, this equipment has a range of 40 kilometers. So they were basically starting to shoot Kiev from my house. So could you see this on your webcam and then the storage of this weaponry and all this artillery? You could see that on the webcam, could you? I could I could see some of it, like uh, a, a glance of it through the window. Uh, there was some equipment moving back and forth. And then when, when the whole thing was over, I counted and I realised that there were 12, 12 units on my land uh, and thankfully, they were destroyed by Ukrainian military. Now, you, I mean, you, you, you obviously have done well. You're a successful businessman. And, and many people in Ukraine that are now going through this absolute horror had successful lives before that they've had to watch be destroyed. Mm. Um, what, what, why do you feel you... Because there's a lot of people for whom the destruction of their home would be utterly devastating. Is it because you could afford to lose your home or was it just you know, that you just couldn't bear, you know, to tell us your position. It's, it's a very simple thing. So if you would ask me two months ago, what kind of feeling would I have if, if some, you know, hostile military people were in my house, I would say fury and anger. However, this is not what I felt. I was surprised. I felt disgusted. I felt dirty, you know, looking yeah. at some, some guys walking inside my house. So it was like an obvious decision. It's not about money. It's about efforts put into the house. I just finished building it. It was a beautiful house. I spent a lot of efforts. And, uh, I, I, you know, I want to do everything possible to, to help Ukraine win mm. because I think we're safeguarding Europe's, Europe's safety. 
and it is important for us to to kick those bastards yeah. out of our land. So that, it's just a little little piece that I could do, that, and yeah. I did it. Okay, um, we'll, we'll just apologise for your choice of language there, but I think a lot of people might well agree with your sentiment. Sorry. Um, uh, Andre, can, can I ask you, I mean, a lot of people are inspired by people like yourself. I mean, it's just incredible uh, the, the, the strength and courage so many people in Ukraine are showing. And I can't help think that you've all been inspired, and we've all been inspired, actually, by your leader, President Zelensky, an incredible man who not long ago was, a, a, was a, you know, a, an entertainment star in your country. He's now leading you through uh, one of the biggest wars you've faced since uh, 2014, quite possibly now. And, uh, what, but you know him personally, don't you? I mean, how did you get to know President Zelensky? I met him a few years ago before he was uh, he became a president, and then we were meeting from time to time uh, during his uh, uh, term. Um, and I must say that uh, this this guy is incredible. He's totally uh, setting up the tempo for everybody, especially for the military. Uh, he has a lot of courage. He's super brave. To be honest, I'm really really proud to have a president like that. And, and how did how did you sort of get to know him? I think you helped him through initially before this with the COVID pandemic uh, response as well, didn't you? <clears throat> yeah, we were uh, we were called by the president when the COVID pandemic hit, and uh, he asked to to take part in uh, in the south of Ukraine to to fight COVID, and we basically formed uh, headquarters um, in in Odessa, and uh, a lot of a lot of uh, instruments and 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 and. Um, examples uh, from that time we are now taking into our humanitarian mission in Ukraine, yeah. uh, trying to get as much humanitarian aid uh, into into the country. Yeah. A lot of people here in Britain, around the world, actually, are helping with the aid effort there. What do you need at the moment? I mean, you know, there's a, still there's some people here thinking, well, should we send goods? Are there specific goods that we should send? Or should they part with their money and give it to some of the uh, big charities like Red Cross or some of the big uh, organisations? What, what is it that you're desperately in need of most at the moment? I think uh, most important things right now are uh, medications, like blood-stopping things and tourniquets and Celux. But also, uh, maybe even more importantly right now, is military support. Uh, because, as I said, we, we are uh, very courageous and brave. However, we are outnumbered and, and, and these guys are still a large army uh, and we're still a small country mm. uh, with a relatively small army. So we need as much military help, help as possible. And I would like to thank uh, Britain uh, on behalf of all Ukrainian citizens for, for the help that uh, we're getting right now. And we actually kindly ask for more. Yeah. Mm. Well, well it, it, it's uh, always a sort of a privilege to, to talk to those in this situation and the bravery, you know, defies all. We know that there are soldiers at the moment in Maripol standing firm despite being told surrender or die and, and it's extraordinary. We wish you good luck yeah. and good luck in rebuilding your home when you eventually get back to it as well. Uh, and we're speaking to one sure, of we will. Uh, and we are speaking to one of our government ministers later on this morning, yeah. Andre, and we will put your request to him and see what more uh, the British government can do for you. We thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.